We're underway on the holiday Monday. The Dragons up against the Bulldogs. The crowd still building here at ANZ Stadium as James Graham straight into the fray. Brings it out to be tackled there by, I guess, the man you could say who directly took his place in Aaron Woods. Contrasting 2018 season, those two players have had to this point as Hunt goes to the right-hand side and Tyson Frizzell. And the Dragons backing up from last Wednesday night. Again, strong for the Blues on that right edge. Jack DeBellin, likewise, in the middle of the field, takes it here beyond the 40. We'll play it for McInnes. Goes down the short side and cuts back to lead Leisha. In his wake, he runs towards him by, gets past him. Paul Vaughan is there backing up. What a break by McInnes. Vaughan looking for a penalty, none given. It goes to Hunt. Comes through with it, away to Lafay. Fends away from Hopalwadi. It'll be a penalty for a high tackle here against the Bulldogs. Well, Cameron McInnes, great footwork, the big right foot step. It was a set that was building. Frizzell down the right edge created a semi-quick play the ball, but it basically came from nothing. There was an opportunity on the left. I thought Lafayette could have used Nene McDonald being as good as he is on his feet, but they'll be on the attack again, the Dragons. A stunning burst. They had them on the attack here in the opening minutes. And this one is McInnes waits. Play the ball from Sims. It goes through to Bellin across to Vaughan, who runs towards Vitala Mariner. Alicia joins the action back on the side here today. Marshall King taking Kieran Foran's place on the right-hand side of this defensive line. Graham pops a ball out the back from Hunt to Widdop. He runs towards Marshall King, who has been very impressive defensively in the games he's played in the 5'8 jumper. A little leg pull here, though, will keep the Bulldogs under pressure. And Frawley usually defends over on the right edge. Marshall King is normally a left-sided defender, really strong on that right shoulder. I don't think it's any coincidence that they've moved Marshall King. There's the leg pull over to this right edge to stiffen it up defensively for the Dogs. Oh, coming out of the line, a collision there with Adam Elliott. And Gainley hit the turf. Looks to be OK, though. Back in the defensive line now is Vaughan. Goes to DeBell and out the back. Hunt into a huge hole, runs Ewan Aitken. Try number eight for his season, and they open up pretty easily, just as Mark Gasney described in the pre-game show. Well, two and a half minutes into the game, three sets with the football for the Dragons, and they take advantage of the field position created by the run from Cameron McInnes, and here he is out of dummy half. Sloppy marker work there, and the footwork beat Michael Leisha, and then was able to beat Moses Embi. Paul Vaughan backing up on the inside, showing great pace for a front rower, and then it was Vaughan to Bellin, just held it up long enough. Hunt and Ewan Aitken into a hole. No one laid a hand on him. Early pressure results in points for the Dragons. We have the number one attacking outfits and the competition. And John Olive there jamming in, coming up empty. And Ewan Aitken. We've seen plenty of that in 2018. Is it, lads? Good start. You know, just had to hold his line, Ewan Aitken. Just held his formation and waited for the middle players, the inside players, to do their job. And Ben Hunt did, just dragging John Olive in. Now Widdop from out wide, waved away to the right-hand side, but what a bright opening for the Dragons, Matty Russell. Fantastic, isn't it, Was By the team that wants to return to the top of the table, their last game against Penrith last Saturday week, players like you and eight can given nine days off by Paul McGregor. Brett Finch, how beneficial a mid-season holiday for the Dragons? Yeah, well, sometimes an extended break, the teams can come out flat, but, geez, the Dragons have started on fire, Matty. Great work by McGuinness, and as Brandy said, you and Aiken untouched. It was like a train and run. It was an excellent start for the Dragons. And was that man Paul McGregor? Game 100 after 158 as a player at the Steelers and St. George Illawarra. Well, they're flying high for lots of reasons here in 2018. Paul McGregor has this team just clicking beautifully. As we mentioned off the top, having lost two of their past three. To get back on that horse here today. And a win. A couple of points is all they need. Again, of the Penrith Panthers who had that one-point win 
against the Raiders down there on Friday night. McInnes out of dummy half. Graham, flat ball there for DeBellin. And calls a forward. Must have been from one of the Bulldogs defenders. The referees and touch judges disagreed. Now Widdop going to the line. Marshall King gets his opposite number there. But they're back in good field position just inside the Bulldogs 40. From McInnes, it goes to Hunt. He puts it in the air. Mosin by for the most part, has been good under the high ball in this new full-time role of full-back in 2018. And DeBellin came in at speed then for a moment. Had a free shot, but he just eased off on the contact at the death. I love that variety to James Graham's game. Great catch there, Moses and Boy, but just the two passes, the nice little tip on plays. Now next time he goes to the line and he has support, he can throw the dummy and he'll probably get a quick play the ball. First penalty here for the Bulldogs will help them out of their own end. The chance to go on the attack. Points have been hard to come by all season for the Bulldogs. Despite being in most of those games in the past six where they won just the one. Oh boy, Moses they've made a mistake. That certainly won't help their chances of scoring points in this game. Gee, they've had the ball for three tackles. That's it. They get a penalty and Moses. Well, that's just an error that shouldn't happen. Instead of being on the attack, he just bit off too much there and by. It was a deep kick, but never been close, really, to fighting the sideline as DeBellin has it here back in Bulldogs territory. Wait, fellas, wait, Adam. McInnes bypasses Graham to go to Hunt. Widdop there under pressure, got it away to Dufty. There's going to be a penalty here for a knock-on or a forward pass. Well, I, I thought he ran behind his player. I thought it was going to be a penalty, was. Dufty got the ball, and the dog's defence was up in their face, which caused Dufty to run behind one of his players, but they're going to rule on a forward pass. Just watch Dufty catch the ball. Sim stops, and there he goes, right behind him. I'm a bit surprised how passive the defence of the Canterbury Bulldogs is, given Brandy the success the Penrith Panthers had two weeks ago against the Dragons with that aggressive up and in defence. I thought their attack really struggled. Now Michael Leisha, it looks like, is going to go to the, the head bin. Didn't see where there was a, a knock that would send him from the field, but According to the Bulldogs trainers, that looks to be the case. He doesn't look happy, does he? Well, the doctor's obviously looking at the vision and thought that he needed to come off the field and buy shrugs away from Aiken, but grabbed there by Ben Hunt. And it was Leisha who missed the tackle for McInnes to make that long bust out of dummy half. It might have been all the way back to that point there that they went back and had a look at the video in the tents down there on the sideline. No Woods. A mistake by and by. Doesn't hurt them. Plays it there. Carrot Holland very quickly out there. Jumping into dummy half. We've seen plenty of that in the last six weeks or so from Dean Pay. Rain in Sydney in the past four or five days. A beautiful sunny day today. The ground a little bit soft perhaps. And saw some players losing their footing. It certainly didn't help. Run off to Amanda there who makes the mistake. So the dogs have had it for two sets. One. He doesn't find touch off the back of the penalty, and then they drop it on tackle three. So it hasn't been a great start for the Bulldogs. They need a bit big set defensively. Try and work their way into this game. Going one way, coming back the other from dummy half, linking up with James Graham. As McInnes assumes duties, and then behind the play, the ball to Bellin will just take a settler. And they'll play it here. They won't play it. An offload there for McGuinness. He comes back to Sims. There by Jackson. Marshall King. He took some stopping. Good chance here of the long right-hand side to go towards Olive again. Hunt heads out in that direction. Went into the line and then tried to pop a ball at the back. The timing wasn't there for Frizzell. And Duffy is able to throw himself on it. So two more plays here. Graham towards oh. the uprights. Vaughan charging hard. Good tackle around the legs. It was made by Holland. Last tackle here. Hunts goes to Widdop at the line. He takes Sims with him. Spinning in the tackle of Hopawati. 
I think Hopewadi has been able to hold him up. I think he might have won the battle there, Hopewadi. Matt Checken will rule. Tackle six, thanks, Chits. Just confirm that the ball touches the ground before he gets held up and he retains possession. He thinks it might have got the ground and then Hopewadi got underneath him. It was a great set by the Dragons. Again, James Graham, the variation with the short passing. And there it is. The ball touches the ground. Does he hold it Tarek, in possession? Tarek Sims maintains possession and grounds the ball in the end goal. Have a decision. He had a wedge there between his abdomen and his wrist or his forearm at least while his hand was moving away from the ball. The fact that it's wedged in there. He kept it in well. You're, okay. you're right because his hand did come away from it. But he was able to keep it wedged in between his body and his wrist. And Matt Checken on the spot. That's exactly what he thought had happened. The ball went down and then he was dragged up into the air. Some really good signs from the halves early. Ben Hunt went all the way into the line over on the right-hand side. Widdop all the way into the line there. Just isolates Hopewadi. It is such a hard tackle one-on-one -on -one when you're standing there with not much momentum. And Tarak Sims, he is one strong boy. He was very close, quite obviously, Brandy, to making the 17 for New South Wales last week in Origin 1. Your impressions of Tarek coming away from the camp? Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. As an 18th man, did everything he could for the team while he was in camp. He was uh, he was terrific. He really was. He had a couple of options there, would have, didn't he? They really had the dog stretch. He could have lobbed one over the top. Montoya came flying in. He opted for the... A close ball for Tarek Sims. I like that little setup play where it was Graham and Vaughan going exactly. to the line together. Vaughan's such a dangerous, big, quick player. He almost crashed his way through the defence. Well, the Bulldogs can't afford to keep giving the Dragons chances like that, Brett Finch. They certainly can't, and I agree with Mark Gasnier. They're certainly a passive on the edge. You see then Tarek Sims, he hit the Bulldog defender you know, two metres off the line. You need to get much harder, and they need to be a lot more aggressive if they're going to stop the ed edges from the Dragons causing trouble. Kick away from James Graham this time. It's Paul Vaughan who brings it back out to play just inside the Dragons 20. Here is Frizzell. Going down the short side here, Kinnis finds you at Aiken. He throws his nose through the line as well. And it's a quick play the ball and will give some space to the forwards. And then Graham again trying to dump it out the back. It went backwards. They'll say he cleaned it up and it's all okay. A couple of those construed as knock ons in the course of the weekend. Graham gets a mini break there perhaps. And now Hunt spins away from. Frawley, who comes again from behind, can't stop McInnes. Goes back to DeBellin, and he'll play it here. 20 metres out from the Bulldogs' line. Tackles up their sleeve. Here's Hunt going to the right-hand side. Aitken pops the ball out the back. Frizzell, the offload, coming thick and fast. Frizzell to the line. Pops the ball out. Another one from Graham. It goes to Hunt. Here is Sims. Eventually wrapped up there. He can't repeat the dose this time around. You get the impression, though, the meter's coming so easily. It's only a matter of time before they grab try number three. The pass wasn't a great one from Hunt to Widdop. Aitken cutting back towards the uprights. Runs all the way back to Josh Jackson. And also Adam Elliott. Two more plays on this six-again set. Here's Graham. Will be... A forward pass. Knock on. Knock on. Knock on. Knock on there. Must have been a dummy half. There's a delayed call for a knock on before the play the ball, in fact. Well, uh, if I look there in the face of you and Aitken, but quite a delay there in the call from the pocket referee to Matt Checken. So it and uh, uh, okay. just there. Right, Tarek Sims lost control of the footy. It touched a Bulldogs player, Josh Jackson. Well, you and Aiken, who was just going for the offload there, wasn't he? Seems to have been more of an issue in 2018. The pocket referee and the communication with the main referee at times, getting the 
those messages through to them. We saw, of course, remember, Dragons versus the Storm down there at Cogra. Melbourne scoring a try, what they thought was a try, and the ball coming way back to a situation. Referees couldn't quite get on the same page. Now Aaron Woods bringing it forward, but only for a nanosecond before he was doubled over there by Tarek Sims. Jackson at the line, Frawley. Or Fatala Mariner. He can cause some damage when he gets a chance inside the red zone, but they're yet to have a tackle inside the Dragons 20. We've had almost 13 and a half minutes here at ANZ. The kick goes down to Dufty. And a few times in the game so far, they'll work it away from their own ends. Not off a restart or a kickoff. Here is Kurt Mann in the starting side for Jason Nightingale. That was a surprise to see the change made by Paul McGregor. Now another mistake, this one against the Dragons, and it will give the Bulldogs a chance. Pretty good field position. I was about to say they've had the same starting 13 12 games in a row, apart from today is the first time they've made a change to their run-on team with Nightingale sitting on the bench for Kurt Mann, who has come up with the mistake. It's a luxury when you can keep trotting them out. Paul McGregor has done so far with the Dragons. Brett Morris will feed the scrum naturally enough. And it's Frawley who comes away to Marshall King. Tries to get on the outside there of Tarek Sims. And the first real chance in attack. We'll see what they can offer here. To Amunga in just game number four in his NRL career, playing it just outside the 20. They'll get a penalty. Down eight points to nil. They won't be thinking about the two. It was you the Dragons imagine. Have to defend with David Clemmer coming on for Renoff to Amunga. There is the change. Clemmer appearing on the scene. Thanks for that one, Matty, as Mbai comes across to find touch. And he gets the Bronx cheer from the Bulldogs fans after missing touch with his previous attempts earlier in the game. So here they are inside the 20. It goes from Holland, Marshall King, Frawley. Cut pass there from Mumbai, runs straight towards Ben Hunt. And some help on the inside from Tyson Frizzell, and he was easily handled. Frawley again. Aaron Woods, subject to so many rumours to his future, his really recent future at the Bulldogs. Now Marshall King tipping it on. Good hands again from Hapawadi to Montoya. Did some ducking and diving, but wrapped up there five metres out by Sims. Goes back through Marshall King. Hands it off for Clemmer. He was outstanding with some of his carries. In the almost half an hour of action he saw against Queensland in Melbourne. Last tackle here, Holland. Ends out with the left-hand side. Marshall King keeps it going. Frawley and by a kick in behind them. Can they wrap up Kurt Mann? He gets away from Morris and he brings it back into the field of play. Yeah, nicely read. Kurt Mann just dropping back, hedging his bets, guarding against the pass, but also the kick. I thought the, the dogs, they looked OK in that set. Shift to the right. There were some great hands. And then in by getting to the defensive line. But man doing a super job to carry it out. As soon as that, though, they've made a mistake. Going, guys. The ensuing play. Well, that's uh, that's three straight errors. The last time the Dragons have had the football. You and Aitken, guilty for two of those. Kurt Mann, a sloppy play the ball that saw it turned over to the Dogs. The Hanley hasn't been quite as good as it was at the beginning of the season in this last three games. But they've dropped two of them, the Dragons. Failed to complete three quarters of their sets in those last three games. Now Jackson it's across to Woods. Well stopped, but he pops it out the back from Frawley. Goes to Adam Elliott, who bursts through the tackle of Frizzell. And the lock forward. The South Coast kid has them on the board. He's been in great form, has Elliot. We spoke about it before the match. Just does everything at 100 miles an hour. So committed, so tough, so reliable. 
Aaron Woods into the line. Great contact from James Graham. Frawley realises there's a little bit of space out there, but Ben Hunt just backtracking towards his try line, waiting for Tyson Frizzell to help him out. It would have been better to be a bit more aggressive, but Adam Elliott again just backs himself. Brute strength and a great effort, and off the back of three straight errors for the Dragons, the Bulldogs capitalise. Oh, they pay that price, Gaz, for those errors. You and Aitken just failing to play the ball properly after Kurt Mann did a job to get them out of trouble. And that gave the Bulldogs another sniff at their line. And it was the, the Aaron Woods offload that just kept things going for the Dogs. He is the man that creates the second phase play for this team. And it's vital that he continues to do that. Scored the fewest tries in the NRL this year. Their, their attack has been a worry. But a nice hit back there. He should make it a two-point ball game, Moses and Bai. Has been kicking well so far this season. No mistake right here. Kicking it over 80%. Now in 2018, up on his average of 70% over the course of his career. Downstairs to Matty. Adam Elliott gives Dogs fans reason to believe was. And here's some more good news. Michael Leisha has passed his HIAs. We look at the try again. Leisha actually ran into Jack DeBellin with an attempted tackle that went wrong. Wobbled. The medical staff dragged him off. And he was back on the bench to see Elliott crash over. And he'll be back on in a matter of minutes. Luxury, of course, for goal kicking when Carrot Holland is out there. Yet to take an attempt so far this season. Moses and Bai striking them. Pretty well for the most part as David Clemmer brings it back out. A bit of noise now in the stadium. The Dogs making this a two-point game. See two early tries. They hit back and hit back well with their real first foray into the red zone at the other end. As Tyler Mariner plays at Holland through Marshall King. It comes across to Josh Jackson. He'll play it here just outside the 30. He'll be smarting having been omitted from that New South Wales team from Origin 1. What they did in Game 1. It'll be tough to see any changes. The second game right here in just under two weeks' time. Woods plays it. Goes for Frawley. That left boot on the left-hand side of the field. Picks out Dufty. Full bear at his own 10 and brings it beyond the 20. As Hunt goes to dummy half midway through this holiday Monday game. The Dogs and the Dragons. The Bulldogs, 11 from 12 wins against the Dragons since 2012. It's a great record, isn't it? And you saw the speed of the line then from Gareth Widdop. Josh Jackson tried to isolate him down the short side, but he got up and off his line. Whereas Ben Hunt over on the other edge seems to wait for them to come at him. Sims playing it. It goes through to Vaughan. Runs towards Elliott. Woods over the top. The Dragons have one more here. Hunt. 15 kicks in Origin 1. In excess of 400 metres. He had New South Wales pinned in their own 20 various stages of the game. And by. The back of the run by Brett Morris. Montoya coming in. Help out from the right wing also. Quick play the ball. Put them onto the ground there. And as a result, shift out to Brett Morris. And they're back into Dragons territory. Tyler Mariner will find Frawley. Here's Woods. He had Clemmer there. Woods again. Another ball out the back. Alicia back out there. Vitala Mariner fends away from Vaughan. And then a bit of a hospital pass there for Josh Jackson. Tim Laffey was sweating on him and jumped out of the line to stop him in a hurry. Last tackle. They've lost the momentum they had prior to that. Marshall King. His kick goes down to Dufty. He'll take it away from the sideline and use his speed. And doesn't he have some speed? And the best part of 50 metres across the field there. And maybe went one metre forward. Bad kick and not a bad result off the chase. After Marshall King was under pressure. Oh, Wait, go to. Into the arm wrestle, the Bulldogs, after being under pressure in those opening five minutes or so. Tries in the third minute and then the tenth minute to Tarek Sims. Recovered nicely from that point on. Helped out by the Dragons handling. 
Frizzell playing it for McInnes. Mason R. Mao is out there now. McGregor goes to his bench for the first time in the forward rotation. But back at the halfway line, McInnes finds Hunt. He'll just kick away again, tries to hook it away from Mbai, and it hits the turf. Witter leads the charge, and by almost able to get away from him, but an ankle tap by Witter. And it is a game suddenly played between the 20 at either end. Bulldogs hands. Pretty good so far. Seven from eight they have completed. The Dragons eight from 12. Here is Clem. Comes towards McInnes and brings it back to the halfway line. Marshall King flat ball there for Jackson. It might have been more than flat. He's been fortunate to get away with one there. The Bulldogs is... Marshall King puts it in the air. Some pressure on Dufty, who lost his footing slightly as he planted it, leaped to the air for that one and did well in the end to adjust and come down with the ball. It's a bit heavy. Seemingly more so at that southern end than it is the northern end. Yeah, the kick needed to be higher. They're in a position after, it, I thought it was a forward pass to Warren, to, to Josh Jackson. Slightly, but that gave them a quick play the ball and the kick from Marshall King just didn't give his chase time to get down there and put more pressure on Dufty. That man with the previous carry, James Graham, following suit. Little touches of the ball as you would expect. Now Hunt from just outside the 30 going early in the tackle count. Again, the Moses and Bayern, the Bulldogs, winning the arm wrestle now, got it almost back at the halfway line. That was a real battle for the Dragons to get it to the 30. Dufty caught the ball on the 10-metre line. They only travelled 20 metres before Hunt was forced to kick and didn't get a great one away. Under pressure are the Dragons. Aaron Woods carry number eight for the game to this point. Now Frawley, Clemmer. Off his hip pocket. Good tackle though by Armau along with James Graham. They head back to the left hand side. Using the ball nicely at the moment, moving these Dragons forwards around. Fatala Mariner runs into James Graham. With Claret from that left eye, a nick or a cut there on Graham as Hopawati with a chance from Marshall King. Not much doing though. And that will end the set for the Bulldogs. Well, their finishes to the set have been quite poor. You mentioned it was they, by far and away, winning the arm wrestle. But they could be applying a lot more pressure to the Dragons through the way they finish their sets. Greg Alexander just mentioned it a bit more height with their kick before they so they could have contested it. And then there, just dying with the football. Well, there was five Dragons that tackled Will Hopawati. That, that fooled no one, that little play down that short side. Hopawati was standing there with five dragons surrounding him, making sure he went nowhere. So the dogs need to, to think more about what they're doing at the end of their sets in good ball position. James Graham coming from the field. That more out there now. Got a field position this time. Gareth Whittup gets the kick away. And it from just inside the 40. He was Looking for a 40-20, and then he chases down up, up Montoya, and they've done well. In that previous set where they were belted by the Bulldogs. Had a field position there for the kick, which went end over end. It's Canterbury work it away from inside their own 30. Morris here going nowhere. Nice response by the Dragons. Aaron Woods back on the bench now. Adam Elliott joining him. Kieran Holland back there with Michael Leisha on deck once again. He is in by. Puts it on to Hapawadi. But not much happening for him in his right-hand side again as Lafay and Widdop makes the tackle. Up against the sideline. Pressure here on Marshall King who gets caught. It was always going to be the case with the play the ball out near the sideline. King at first receiver had precious little time to try and put the kick in. And again, it was a nothing play. They got the ball eventually at the Hopawati, but all they did was run all the defenders over to where Hopawati was because it's a nothing play. Then they finish on a sideline before they want to set up with a kick, which put all sorts of pressure on Marshall King. Right foot kicker too. Exactly. Off load there. Ball out the back. Nicely supplied by Jeremy Lattimore. And they're just outside the 20 as Widdop gets the dummy half. Can playing it? 
his arm now. A mental mistake really by the Bulldogs. Has them under big pressure again here. They've cracked easily two times prior to this. McGuinness for Hunt. Out the back for Widdop. He pops a ball over the top. McDonald up against the sideline. He tried to keep it in play. If he managed to do that, you're going to say it's a knock on against McDonald. He's trying to pop it back on the inside as he was tippy toeing quite literally along the sideline. He managed not to pop it out the back. Just popped one over the top, Gareth Widdop to McDonald, who was heading towards the sideline and just had to stop. He got it back inside, but. Check and said he pushed it forward. And that means the dogs will get the footy. If he started a bit wider than Nene McDonald, he wouldn't have had to run that line towards the sideline. And he has got a great left foot. I think he'll be kicking himself with that one because that was a golden opportunity. Just showed him with his hands, Gaz, showing the angle that he had to go. And you're right, if he was on, on the sideline, he wouldn't have had to run that the angle towards it. Bulldogs hold it up in the back of the scrum there. Past the, the heel of the second row. Because the Dragons offside, they held their ground. And Clemmer it is who works it forward. Two tries to one. A penalty here to Canterbury. Well, he won that little contest, David Clemmer, and they just tried to slow him down. That second more, which got the Dogs the penalty. And he was on his front, ready to play the ball, and that put pressure on those making the tackle. It was Tarek Sims and Jack DeBellin. Like a brim in the bottom of the, bottom of the boat. It gets off the hook. It's a big brim. Yeah, yeah he's a big, a big brim. brim. Can't find the pliers to pick him up. Jeremy! Here is Leisha. Across. To Aidan Tolman, who's back Jeremy, first time since no, no. round four, been out with an ankle injury. Another who's been rumoured as far as trade options for the Bulldogs and this salary cap drama they have. And by takes it inside the 30. Brett Morris jumps in the dummy half, goes to Frawley, and then Clemmer somehow has fingers of glue to reel that one back in. It was clever in the end, Frawley, flat ball there, it was more than forward. More than flat at least, it was forward. And Fytala Mariner, in a weekend in which we've seen some real heavy metal hairdos, supplying one here today. Well, nothing came of it, but what an effort it was for Clemmer to get those fingers outstretched. And then the following play... Disappointing. That's the thing with the Bulldogs, isn't it? It's not so much creative. They always test you physical, physically, as you saw with the Elliott try, but the halves, every time they go earlier to Hopawadi, they do nothing to the line, so in turn, all the defenders can just go to where they want the threat to be. It's building nicely. Inside for the Bulldogs. Don't forget, following this, NRL 360 tonight, Ben Eichen and Paul Kent was pulled back from Vegas yet. Private jet, he'll be back in no time at all. Certainly make the weekend's action. Now 4 2, this Telstra Premiership. The gap between those in the top eight and those outside growing as the season goes on. Here is Witter, out of dummy half. Bellin now fending away from Vitala Mount. It was touched there by the Bulldog. She did well there, Jack Dragons. DeBellin. There, they get six to go, was DeBellin just skipping across the face of that dog's line. Had Hunt in space, just couldn't get it to him. Josh! Josh! Now, mate! Josh! Crack them on either side of the field. They'll be thinking, which option do we go with here? They're back just 10 metres out. DeBellin handing it off there for Lattimore, who has done well under pressure not to knock that on into one of the Bulldogs. Clay Priest is out there for them now. As Hunt pops a ball, well, Frizzell stops on his one. Aiken picked it up. Almost found himself in a little bit of space. Eventually there by Olive and also by Tyler Mariner. Hunt's kick, a wobbly old one. It worked out all right for Winner. He had visions for a moment there of passing it off the ground. He decided against it. 
Good call. Hunt puts a kick in. A second one. And Bai has to dig and bring it back to the field of play. He does exactly that. Good work by the fullback. And what a passage of play. Gareth Widdop, I thought he was going to stretch out and try to get there. And then Ben Hunt, they put all sorts of pressure on him. Did amazingly well to get boot the ball, but Moses from Bai, sensational get the ball back out. Here's Widdop in the replay box. Just pulled down your right, thought oh. about just popping that ball. I don't think the support was close enough, and it was Leisha that pressured Ben Hunt. Space out wide. A quick play, the ball's here by the Bulldogs. One from Tom and one from Leisha as a result. Still pressure on the kick there on Frawley, who lofts it. it goes down to Dufty. He's out of that right-hand side. Fancy his chances against Vitala, Mariner and also Olive. Now a pass there from Aitken. Hunt keeps it alive. Globe globe. Trot his footy here at the moment. Man eventually wrapped up just on his own side of halfway. Nine offloads to this point by St George Little Warren. I don't know if that was the plan, but it certainly worked out for them pretty well to this point. And it's even better now. Another penalty to have the dogs under pressure once again. Six and a, six and a half minutes to go before the break. It's a big period of the game. Only two behind the dogs. They'd be happy with that. Tarek Sims gets it inside the 20. Full set here from close range again. Armel from Vaughan on the angle there, almost got away from Faitala Mariner. Frawley was under pressure there to try and lock up the front rower. With it. Goes flat out the back. Lafayette, quick hands from Duffy. McDonald juggled it and then died for the corner. He's trying to sell it. It was a close run thing. Right and we'll see what the referral is from Matt Checker. Tackle three. We have a try. Please confirm the play stays in one ground. He thinks four points. Hoppelwadi got there to try and force him into touch. But he gets it down comfortably while he's in midair. Yeah, fantastic put down. Nene McDonald. He just had a feeling off the back of that penalty that... The Dragons have had a couple of chances Dino down McDonald here. McDonald remains in the field of play and grounds the ball in the in goal. You have a decision. They just haven't been able to find the right man. McDonald himself had to push a pass in as he was travelling towards the sideline. Hunt Nelly created one with his kick. They've been close but haven't iced it, and they did then. Big try, five minutes short of half time. And after winning their opening six games, the Dragons, they've only won three of their last six. You started to think, OK, have the wheels fallen off? Many people said it like 2017, but I've been really impressed with the opening 35 minutes of this half. Yes, the errors have been there. Really nice set play. It's a great play. They start to use the loop play, as they call it. Lafay goes into the line. Again, it takes out any risk of being an obstruction with the decoy runner, because as Lafay catches it into the line, pops it to Dufty. We know how quick he is. So straight away, the winger Montoya is interested, and that opens up space for that man, Nene McDonald, who is one of the best finishers in the competition. Has really enjoyed the move to the left wing. Jason Nightingale's old roll. And 2018, a kick from the sideline. Tremendous from Widdop. And they open up an eight-point advantage, boys. Isn't he a modern-day winger, Nene McDonald? Big and strong and athletic. First half, Finchie, very much control position, control the game. Yeah, it certainly is, uh, Matty. The only time the Dragons found themselves under pressure when they come up, the back-to-back bar back errors coming out of their end. But other than that, whenever they've cleared their sets, they've caused plenty of problems for the Bulldogs. See, Dufty's pass was magnificent, wasn't it? Had catch and pass all into one motion as Montoya came in. The Dragons will feel the scoreboard better reflects how the game has gone. Certainly the chances created versus chances taken. Well in front non-category, if you like. Well, four line breaks to one for the Dragons. Nine offloads to two. Dragons lead that department. 
good variety in their play too. You saw the short passing with Graham, you saw McInnes go through the ruck, and then you just saw a set piece for that try. Here's Lattimore. An offload this time, grabbed there by Priest. And also Jackson, good up. will put it in the air, off the right boots. By goes up to make the catch. Lafayne was intent on in trying to get there to make a contest of it. But there was Bulldogs players in front of him, legally so. Roll up their sleeves from their own end. Inside four minutes remaining in this first half. Three tries to one. It's 14 sixes. Whitey takes a carry. All the way, all the way. Alicia. From dummy half. David Clemmer. The leader's there after contact. Ends up his elbows and knees looking for a quick play of the ball, but Jackson ends up on his back here in the, the effort from Tarek Sims. Outstanding once again there as Mbai puts it up. It's a perfect spiral. Goes down to Dufty, though, who takes it on the full at the 20. And they'll bring it back to almost their own 40. They're on top here. No doubt determined to have one more crack at them before half time. This run by McDonald will certainly help. Takes them back into Bulldogs territory. McGuinness goes across to Kurt Mann. Meters there. Only so if you're Dean Pay watching on. He's still going, Kurt Mann. Well, what they can't do, the dogs, is give up another try. His arm out goes to Widdop, shows it to Sims, and then Lafay runs head first into Marshall King. Two plays in this set. Just on the 20, Vaughan. Two arm out. Good legs tackle there, made by Priest. One more, they come back to the left hand side. Widdop was very flat, goes out the back. Dufty again, once more to McDonald, off the left foot. Tries to spin his way in this time. He can't find Lafay when he was caught eventually by the defence. Boy, they went close to scoring again through the same combination. They did. I actually thought he was going to go wide to Tim Lafay. They set it up. A great pass from Dufty. Nene McDonald, you would normally back him there in that situation, but the offload goes astray. Tim Lafay was screaming for the football. He and Tarak Sims had paired up and he wanted to get the ball on the out. By that, I mean heading towards the sideline. He thought he could have got Will Hopalati. Close call again for the Bulldogs on this left hand side, which has been under siege at times in this opening half. Clever here from an advancing line there of Lattimore and Widdop. They're out quickly to get him. Likewise, Leisha needs some metres here. It's likely to be their final set unless they can get six more here somehow. Marshall King takes it forward, so one of their kicking options caught here on the last tackle. Jackson finds Frawley. will go with a shift instead. The pass goes to ground pressure here on Olive. He tries to put a kick in in the tackle. That was a disaster, and the Dragons will get... A fair they can crack at them inside the final 60 seconds. Well, they've put some good ones together, but gee, there's been some poor ones too. That's Bulldog sets with the footy. That wasn't their best. Minute short of half time, they turn the ball over. Thanks, David. A bonus chance here. Oh, and George Itilwara. Zell has it. Just inside the 30. Mm. Two seconds remaining. Goes to Lattimore. Now a shift to the left-hand side. Dufty again. Lafay. Couldn't be wrapped up there by Montoya. McDonald comes away from the sideline. He'll run midfield, using up time on the clock. Goes away to Waken. Into the outside there of Olive. Now he keeps it alive. It comes back to Frizzell. This is the last play now. And Widdop suddenly realising that takes a long-range crack at field goal. It goes to Moses and by. He's thinking about a counter-attack. For a moment there, I thought he was going to throw a long ball out to the wing, but he thinks better of it. And they've done well to survive the last three minutes there where they were camped inside their own end of the field. After 40 here. On the holiday Monday at ANZ Stadium, 
Yes, the Dragons who lead the Bulldogs 14 points to six. Dragons get us back underway. Second 40 minutes, NRL 360 and the big league wrap. We follow this affair here today at ANZ Stadium. David Clemmer will play it. With carries coming off the bench for Dean Pay again here today. Eight now in the game for the New South Wales front rower as Leisha looks across and finds Clay Priest, but out of the line. Jeremy Lattimore was there quickly. Their line speed has been impressive at various stages of this game. The Dragons. Made some mistakes with their hands to give the Bulldogs a chance, which they capitalised on, but from that point on, the defence has been very good. And they've dominated field position as they're doing right here. Lattimore again. Grabbing Jackson by the scruff of the neck and slewing him sideways. And Bai gets the kick in, but he has to loft it into the air. Dufty, as a result, takes it on the full, hands it off to Kurt Mann. Going on this right hand side for Jason Nightingale, who's waiting for a chance on the bench. And if he gets a chance here, maybe only a cameo role perhaps at the end. We have seen Kurt Mann go without taking the field when he has played that utility role off the bench, so you never know. McInnes from dummy half. Comes this left hand side for Tim Laffey. Of course, Jason Nightingale still to work out his future. Born 40 metres out. Last tackle here for the Dragons as McInnes goes back to Widow. Get off that right boot and by standing underneath it has been he's been perfect under the high ball yet to make an error. Wadi off the back of that catch takes the first run, pops a ball out the back. It was after the call of held. Play the ball again here, guys. So here to give him the chance. The Dragons appeal for a knock on there, or Dragons possession at least, but they're disappointed to find out that won't be the case. Clemmer. Spins his back and looks for an offload. Can't get one. Leisha jumps out of dummy half. We know that he has the whereabouts. And the now to jump out from dummy half and create some problems for the Dragons. It's been well contained though so far today after going for an HIA. In the early minutes of this game. Finds the ball here for him by to put it in the air again. They'll loft it down to Dufty on the full and begins. At his own 10. There's Kirkman back there with him. And tries to just ghost his way in between for Tyler Mariner and also John Ollie. He doesn't need much space, does he? Dufty just headed infield, but then attacked the gap between Olive and for Tyler Mariner and almost squeezed his way through there. And it's Kirkman to work it forward as they take it away from their own end. We'll take it down to Matty Russell for a halftime report. Matty. Was Paul McGregor really satisfied? He just wants his side to be more mindful of possession in the opposition half and more selective with their offloads. As for Dean Pay, Finchy? Yeah, Dean has spoken of more aggressive in the defence. He wants them to get up, get up off the line and be more aggressive. And in the attack, obviously, better finishes to their sets. They need to get in better position to get a good kick away. The possession will be a key for them. Another bomb here. It's been bomb for bomb at the moment. Gave it off to Montoya there, who was straight away by Tim Laffey, who's his judgment jamming in on that left-hand side on the chase has been good again today, as well as his defence in general play. Going to pop out the back here, and Josh Jackson will take some metres out of the Dragons. Plenty of that. Good here just outside their own 30. Four gone in this second half. No change to our halftime score. They'll have something to say about that at the moment. And by is away off the break made by Brett Morris. He was grabbed by the coattails by a fingernail. They're five metres out. Frawley from dummy half. They came up quickly. Can we Donald get left some space. Jackson puts a kick in, chasing through. Hoppawati gets we there, break and break the break Bulldogs break. are in. A tremendous we'll passage of play, set up by Brett Morris with his bust, and by we almost went the rest of the way. And then Josh Jackson we we puts a kick in. Advantage. We had offside plays. We'll go back for the penalty. Okay. The referee said we'll go back for a penalty. Josh Jackson, the Bulldogs kicking game of the Bulldogs the right. hasn't been one of their strengths. 
the first half. And it's Josh Jackson that grubbers it in. Up oh, already, no doubt about it. Look good live. It's good on Here replay as well. In goal. Have a decision. And the Bulldogs trailing 14-6 needed to be the next to score. They weren't going to drag back three tries. They needed to score first in this second half. And they have done through Will Hopawadi an extraordinary dummy half run from Morris on to Wembai that set it up. He jinked his way in behind the play the ball, Morris. There he is and straightens himself up, beats Paul Vaughan. And it was Ben Hunt who grabbed the jersey of Embai, otherwise he was away. Otherwise he would have scored and he almost did, gets past Widdop, goes to ground, plays the ball, they shift it to the right, Clemmer, good hands, out to Jackson, summed it up nicely, had two players on the run with only one dragon there in Tim Laffey and got the kick perfect. A bit of speed, a bit of footwork, create something out of nothing for the Bulldogs. Through the, the veteran legs, Brett Morris. And that's the way through the Dragons. Not, not trying to second man plays out, out wide, out in the extreme edge. And we saw in the first half that they were just comfortably handled by the Dragons' defence when they ran those big sweeping plays. Got to punch holes through the Dragons. Exactly like Morris did then. Tough one here for Moses Mbai on the right side of the field, though, as far as the left-footed kicker is concerned. To make it a two-point game. Strikes it well enough, just a bit too much draw on the ball. It stays at 14 points to 10, but Brett Morris still doing it, Brett Finch. Yeah, he certainly is, and it was so important for the Dogs to score first here in the second half. And a couple of their senior players have really lifted. Brett Morris, geez, he scored plenty of tries over his career, but he set one up there, beautiful run through the middle. And then Josh Jackson, what a great little right foot. I would have been happy with that short kicking game. Look at him jump and then straighten himself up. Nice pass Cameron. to him by. Cameron! Cameron, wait! Desperate effort from Hunt and Widdop. Look at, look at a game here now. You bet we do. Here is David Clemmer bringing it back with interest. Move. Takes it beyond the 20. Great carry there. Kickoff didn't make it down into the end goal area. Matt Frawley has to surrender in the tackle almost after running behind Vitala Mariner. Brett Morris now five line breaks in his last four games. Ben. Big one right then. Here's Tom at the line. Goes to Marshall King. Jackson into space. Jackson was away for a moment. Dragged down from behind. A desperate tackle by Tarek Sims. They're finding space through the middle. Here's Marshall King now. He backs himself. Last tackle. Goes to Frawley, who puts a kick across the field. Here is Brett Morris in a contest. It's still oh. there. Morris got a hand on it, and he thinks he scored. It was bouncing around. He almost got there, but maybe did enough in the first instant to put man off who couldn't handle the kick. Well, what a kick it was, and what a set off the back of points. Marshall Bulldogs King, as long as Morris doesn't get left. a hand to it. Originally, when the ball comes down, it's all Kurt Mann. Morris doesn't touch the football there. Mann juggles it. Loses sight of it. Almost gets it again. Ball's gone backwards off Kurt Mann. Olive goes past the footy. And knocked forward by Kurt Mann. Here's the clincher. Comes back towards Morris. Oh, there's a, there's a dragon in there too. And it's Ewan Aitken who is thereabouts. And boy, he's gone very close to winning the race here. His hand's a bit lower than Morris. No good. And Brett Morris has grounded Brett the ball Morris in goal. Have a decision. Dry. Aiken gets in contact with the ball, but because it's a dead heat, it goes to Brett Morris. It's it'll a, be a try for the Bulldogs. 
simultaneous put down, if you want to put it that way. And it's green lights for the dogs, and we're locked up here at Homebush. And Brandy mentioned it, a set after points. It was sensational. Instead of going out the back to go wide and shift all the defenders over, Josh Jackson just dropped back under, back in behind, in the space. And then that provided the platform. Marshall King dropped him back under. Look at that. Inside Tarak Sims, McInnes. And then off the back of that, great kick. Perfect weight from Frawley, as we know he can do. Brett Morris is so good under the high ball. Man did well, considering Brett, Brett Morris just Johnny on the spot. And if we had a game before, well, we've got a game now. Brandy's right, that, that is the way you think of all the teams that have had success against the Dragons. One try today, Brett Morris, that's try number 143 for his career. Think of South, Warriors, Panthers, they all went back through the middle in behind the ruck of the Dragons. Lying down the uprights. Moses and Bai. We know he missed his previous kick. This one is terrific. And he's given the Bulldogs the lead. 16-14. And there's some noise here now, Matty Russell. The kid from Kiama burning his former club was he made his NRL debut. Round 9, 2006. And George Illawarra against Cronulla. He played 169 games in the Red V. Here he is now at Canterbury. Mark Gasnier, you played a lot of footy with Brett Morris. What a finisher he has been. What a finisher he is, Matty. And even better, what a champion bloke he is. Great man to have outside you. Well, the Dragons will be rocked. And no. doing some rocking himself on lead guitar is David Clemmer. They'd be stunned. Eight and a half minutes into the second half, the Dogs have hit the front. Two tries. Keep going. Keep going. Well, comes backwards here. It is that man. Six-string specialist, no, no, David no. Clemmer, who will play a 20 short of the halfway line. He's playing base, just pounding out the rhythm off those restarts. Getting them into field position, and then Morris, Jackson, Frawley. They're playing the melody. Leisha out of dummy half, heads to the open side. He'll stop there in good field position. Nice metres again here for the Bulldogs off the back of these back-to-back -back tries. The kick in the air from Moses and by. They won't make a contest of it. Dufty with an easy catch here, but they'll wrap him up. And the Dragons will go to work inside their own 20. Another win just there on the chase through. Clay Priest making the tackle. We'll see how the Dragons respond. Well, they're cruising with an eight-point lead. Which did reflect the way the game had gone, and certainly possession in that opening 40 minutes. But what a change. After it was set for set in the opening four or five minutes. On this second half, it all changed very quickly with that Brett Morris burst. To Bellin at the line, it goes to Hunt. Comes away to Frizzell, who'll take it back into Bulldogs territory. Well handled there, though, by Matt Frawley. One more play here from the sideline. Can they get out and put some pressure on Hunt? Johnny, get in there. Try and find the line here. There's a little leg break away from the chalk. By comes across the field to link up with Marcelo Montoya. Hoppawani back there as well, but backed himself. And he almost found a bit of space between Lafay there and Tarek Sims. The pass wasn't a great one. Hoppawani gave him by there a bit of a job, but he did well. Half an hour remaining. And given the Bulldogs and their recent record against the Dragons, having won 11 of the past 12, he promises to be absorbing. Clemmer almost back at the halfway line. Alicia ducking out of dummy half. It's an encouraging sign. Picking up 10. Oh, it's 15 metres here by the time he plays it. Tolman gets the dummy half. And by doing the kicking again, under real pressure there, goes out to the wing to be taken by Brett Morris, dumps it out the back, and then Frawley, second kick, with his banana one into touch. And they've got away with it. Their kicking game has left a bit to be desired at times in this game, but they got away with one there. Well, and they've come up with two tries off kicks with Josh Jackson. Dropping that one on the ground for Will Hopawadi and then the second try with Matt Frawley. But their general kicking has struggled. 
but they find themselves in front. And the kick chase will be impo an important component of whether they stay in front. There's the metres with Clemmer leading that charge with 160. 12 runs, 160 metres. After this game here between the Dragons and the Bulldogs, back-to-back -back shows. Fox League, NRL 360. Kieran Foran watching on with Josh Morris there. Two key exclusions from the side today. And the big league wrap with Bonnie Sampson and Mick Ennis. Follow Ben Eichen and James Hooper. Deputising for Paul Keats to winging his way back from Vegas, baby. Watching the Hornet in action against Terence Crawford, who was impressive yesterday. Can't he box? James Graham. Paul Hunt showing it extravagantly. Aitken now coming back towards the middle. Links up with Widdop. They follow that left-hand side. It goes out to Lafay, grabbed by Marshall King. 30 metres out from the Bulldogs line. Widdop getting caught here. The pass. It was OK, they say. Just a just. Sort of Dragons play you'd expect, and then Widdop knocking it down here. Well, knock it on. He was up there looking for a sneaky intercept. And the Bulldogs will have the scrum feed at their own 10, leading by two. Yeah, just thought he'd, he thought he got help, had Will Hopawadi there. Tarek Sims ended up doing the kicking after Widdop was well held, still offloaded the footy. Was despite their lean trot, plenty of Bulldogs jumpers in a very healthy Queen's birthday crowd of. 21,376, the biggest of the round. And those Dogs fans hoping their side can hang on for a narrow win instead of a narrow loss. It's fair to say there are nervous Dragons fans watching this remaining 26 minutes today, whether it be in the stadium or live on Fox League. They'll drop two of their past three. We'll to see something today. And they Pretty sharp for the most part in that first half, but oh, how much starch they have here today will now be tested. They've produ produced a bit of starch here. Good tackle. The ball coming free from Josh Jackson in the defence of that middle third, and they get a chance to go back on the attack. A couple of dragons off the line so quick there. They saw Josh Jackson coming with the footy, and it was Jack DeBell. And how many times does he do that? Hit around the football and force an error. One of the best low tacklers in the game. And he's just come up with a, a big one there. And it'll give the Dragons the ball. You mentioned it goes, the Dragons. They have that hoodoo. The dog, they can't beat the Dogs. Form goes out the window. And it's Duffy off the scrum win. A little bit of voodoo for the hoodoo right here as Frizzell. Heads towards the line. Don't mention hoodoos around the Dragons fans. They're still shell-shocked after that hoodoo against the Raiders for all those years. Here's a chance. Sims getting back to his feet was held, though, in the tackle by Marshall King. DeBellin comes back here for Lisa Armau. First real chance in attack in this second half. And they'll get a penalty. The Bulldogs this time in the play the ball perhaps and force the ball loose there on Lisa Armau. 4-3 the penalties I'm not sure exactly why yeah, yeah. the penalty was blown was the effort over the face there yep round I think that's what it was for play priest, priest. A bit too enthusiastic there trailing by two and it's no surprise they'll take the chance to level things up here Start all over again. I wonder if it's only a matter of time before they kick in behind that right edge of the Bulldogs, the Dragons. And definitely setting up a lot of their set plays, targeting the Bulldogs' right edge, as you would. They're playing up and in. They've played David, short to Tarak David. Sims on many occasions now. David! No mistake from Gareth Woodup beside the uprights. It's 16 apiece here. 23 and a half minutes remaining. This good Monday holiday crowd at ANZ Stadium and the 
Bulldogs, as they did in round 26 last year, trying to do it once again. Knock the Dragons out of the playoffs in 2017. I think they're a good chance here again today. Nothing like being on the big screen at the footy, is there? Did you see that, Mum? We're on the telly. Kick goes down to Ben Hunt. It's Lisa Armau who brings it back. Kinnis out of dummy half comes to you and Aitken. They roll up their sleeves here from their own 30. Flat through the middle there. They go to the short side, in fact, for Frizzell. Against his New South Wales teammate there in David Clemmer. John Olive also involved in that tackle. James Graham hit heavily there by Aaron Woods. Contact over the ball. He wrapped him up very quickly for Bellin. As are Mao. Trailing through with him. They've worked it back to the Bulldogs 40. Last play here, and then they'll pass it into Josh Jackson. This will be interesting. Oh. They're going to say they did it deliberately. And it's a penalty to the Bulldogs. What a turn of events that is compared to what we've seen. Cameron, Cameron, go in please. In recent times, with the crackdown on this rule. play. I've seen it's deliberate, mate. That's what I've done. It's deliberate. Coming into effect here today in a big, big way. Well, I would say in Cameron McInnes's defence, he was looking to pass it to his to his kicker. It was play five. But again, we bring in another rule where it's at the referee's discretion. It's... He was trying to give it to his number seven, who was standing right in line with that. You're exactly right. Passing towards his first receiver. On the other side of the equation, Josh Jackson wasn't really making any more movement to get out of the way. He was there, but he wasn't rolling away or moving away. He just stayed thereabouts. It might have been a very, very tough one against St. George Illawarra. As a result, the Bulldogs have it five metres out. It goes to David Clemmer. Here is Jackson, the man in question. Taken high there around the shoulders. No more by Gareth Widdop. Comes back. Frawley again, kicking out towards Morris. They've had success there before. Morris got a touch on it and knocked the ball on. And it'll be the Dragons who come away with it on the changeover after Ben Hunt was able to clean up. The Bulldogs not scoring there. I think the Dragons fans will be screaming, that is justice. Have to give Josh Jackson a big rap, though. He could have dropped the bottom lip after not getting selected in origin. He's been great here this afternoon. So physical, high work rate, really involved. He's already had 20 tackles, 12 hit-ups. Such a reliable, tough player. Not only Dragons fans blowing up was, I've got B. Finch sitting beside me. Ready, Finchy? Go. I just don't understand how it's a penalty of the opposition. If he deliberately passes the ball into a man in the way, just call play on. It's like when you try and milk a medal uh, when you're playing the ball. The referee just says, get up and play it. If you pass it into a man in the way, just say play on. Exactly. Milking. It wasn't one of those cynical ones that we've seen plenty of when there was an explosion of them a couple of rounds ago, which forced the crackdown from the referees into looking after that because it was getting ridiculous. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm saying that Josh Jackson was in direct line what Cameron McInnes was trying to do, but I agree with Finchie. The ball bounced off Josh, Josh Jackson. The Dragons player picked it up. Uh, play on. Not again. It's spoken about, the talking point for our roll 360 and the big league rap, perhaps. With the old hooker himself, McGuinness, alongside Bonnie Sampson tonight beyond this game. Here is Adam Elliott, who's had a fair stint back on the bench. Back out there now, though, he'll be fresh for this final 19 minutes. We're still locked up at 16, and by his kick, he's been looking after the kicking almost exclusively in this second half. He finds Dufty on the full. Of distance on the kick. And he brings it back there to be wrapped up by Marshall King and also Hopawati. Okay, we'll we'll talk about the penalty. He came off the back of it. That five playing it. McDonald to jink away from dummy half. Pops the ball out the back and gives McGinnis a chance. Got the action going of his bust. Out of dummy half in the first half. And 
Opening five minutes of the game to put the Dragons on the board for the first time. He waits here at dummy half now for Armau to play it. Goes past Graham for Hunt. The bell back on the inside. Frizzell on the outside. They take it down inside the 30. One more play here. They put the back three under pressure. Hunt runs towards the sideline. A kick ricocheted off Tolman, not played at. Still the last. So it's Wittip now who gets a chance. He puts it in the air. Goes out towards Montoya. There are some blockers there. They're again in legal position, not taking anybody off the ball. That was a good catch by Montoya. And Hunt taking a chance of getting caught down the short side there. Almost came undone in a massive way. It's Vitala Marin offends away from the defence and does so again. He's got a pretty fair left hand. There's a third one. Not a bad jab. Goes a forward, a kick from inside the 40, thinking 40-20. Didn't have the angle on it. Decide to chance their arm and go early, looking for that 40-20. They'll stop Dufty, though. He gets driven back inside his own 10. He lost the ball. They're going to say penalty for going on with the tackle beyond the call of held. Hey, you know what? No need for it, mate. Stay there. Mate, I'm not explaining it here, mate. It doesn't matter. I, do, I get, mate. I give them tolerance, but not 10 metres, mate. Okay. You could hear the call of hell coming, but if it was coming from Matt Check, and he was a long, long way from where the tackle was being. Completed. They would have heard it. They, they would not have heard that, and it's very hard to stop yourself immediately if you've got someone on the back foot. I, I've seen countless times this year where players have been allowed to drive players back between five and ten metres, That's, that seemed OK to me. Matt Checken, perhaps he thought that Dufty was in the air, which would affect the immediate call of hell, and perhaps why he urgently screamed it out. It is from dummy half. It goes to Hunt. Marshall King up looking for a chance. Tarek Sims almost found that space, though, in behind the 5'8". He picked up 15 good metres as Graham goes to the line. He has DeBellin coming with him. Again, the Dragons almost found a way in behind them. Frizzell doing almost a full 360, rounding to straighten up and play it here 15 metres out. McInnes goes to Graham and comes out to Hunt. A kick for Winnick chasing through. They've produced plenty this season so far, just like that. But this time Mbai is there to wrap it up. A great set of hands from most Mbai. Oh, now they've conceded a penalty. Aaron Woods late contact. Aaron Woods. Another area they've been cracking down on in the past weeks off the back of incidents involving Jonathan Thurston. I think the contact from Aaron Woods yeah, yeah. Well, on ball. Ben Hunt there after the, the kick. Yeah, yeah. If there was no hand, it was play on two, no, it was no. play over here. No, 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 not at all. Why did they change that rule? Mate, I'm not, I'm not going to dispute the rule with you. I'm telling you how I ruled it, mate. Oh, right. Which one? Late contact, mate. Aaron Woods. Well, I, I didn't see it because I was watching the ball. So I'm, Bulldogs continually asking questions, which I guess you would. It was a good set from the Dragons. With the shift over to the left edge, Tarak Sims went through. Frizzell got a quick play of the ball, which allowed Ben Hunt the opportunity to kick him behind. But Moses Zumbai, his hands, that was quite special. And there's the contact. It's on James Graham. A minute 20, mate. Well, what I will say, that Woods wasn't travelling that fast. It's hard, again, a slow motion. If you if you saw it as it as it happened live, it mightn't have looked that bad. But Woods wasn't travelling that quick, so he had every opportunity to stop. I would say. You're exactly right. It's contact he didn't need to make. He could have pulled up. He could have pulled up. Sometimes you see players flying, and and there's instant contact. On that one, I would say that Aaron Woods, although he might feel hard done by. Well, you can't change the rule need... just because it was a front rower he hit. Had, had that been a halfback, yep. you'd be saying you've got to protect the playmakers. So if it's OK for halfbacks, it's OK for front rowers as well. And 
again, he advanced to make that tackle, a tackle he didn't need to make. James Graham would take offence to that. Fences himself as a ball player. Well, we've known that for a long <laughs> time, haven't we? Here he is. No ball playing right here, bringing it back to Adam Elliott. They've got the lead off the back of back-to-back -back penalties. The Dragons, their nose is in front again at 18, 16, 13 minutes remaining. Lisa Armau will play it here just outside St George Little Warriors 20. Comes out wide to Hutt. Pops a ball out the back, does well, and then Frizzell is there. It's a good metres in recent sets of six for the Dragons. Almost back at the halfway line on three plays. Debellin. Made it here quickly. And now McInnes, as a result, was fully squared there at marker. And have only just been back on side. McInnes, though, picks up 20 metres plus. Last tackle. They can put an attacking kick in across the field. Montoya again is underneath it. Hoppawati, in fact, goes forward. It bounces back. It came off a drag, and Tim Lafay got the hand on it and knocked it forward, and that will be the changeover. Again, second phase play from the Dragons. That's their 17th offload now for the match. This is a big test for the Bulldogs. They've got to not try, I think, to try play around the Dragons again. They've had success back through the middle inside the back rows of the Dragons. Get the impression they feel there's a real chance here. Offensive assault. Try and limp the metres here for the Bulldogs. Talon Mariner comes back through the middle. The intensity just dropping off the Dragon as far as line speed is concerned on that particular play. Now Woods. Good run right there. Drags arm now with him. Quick play the ball. It goes out to Marshall King. Jackson on the angle again. Back in behind the play the ball. Quick one once more from Holland. It goes to Marshall King. Hopalwadi rubbers in behind them. Pressure here on McDonald, who did well coming in to clean the ball up. Wasn't the result the Bulldogs were looking for. They've got the Dragons back inside their own 20. What can they do now defensively? It was a great set, though, from the Bulldogs. We mentioned that they went back through the middle three occasions, rolled upfield really easily. But again, it's their finishes to the set. Don playing it there for McInnes. Woods thought that he pitched a metre or so to take him out of play as far as Marker was concerned. Donald, five on his own side of halfway. Play five here, it's Kurt Mann. Who links up with Widdop. Sims was there, but he was well marked, so Widdop hangs on to it. Pops the ball out the back. Hunt puts the kick in, an ad lib one from outside the 40. Not a bad one as far as field position goes. Morris gets back there, sees some space, brushes through the tackle of Ben Hunt and brings it back 25 short of the halfway line. Well, oh, quick play the ball. Mark from you and Aitken there. He's going to be penalised, not square. The speed of the play, the ball worried him that much that he was caught offside. Inside the final ten. Penalty 6-5 to the Dragons. Dean Pay, a worried man up there in the coach's box. Doing it tough in his rookie season. The Bulldogs mentor. Clemmer playing it. Here they are on the attack. Trailing by two. Today scoring three tries in a game for just the sixth time this season. In fact, their, ta their best tally is four in a game so far this season. They're in search of number four here today. Jackson, double pump there before he played it. Give it the green light. And Clemmer it is. Putting his hand up again. Has been enormous. 15 carries. 175 metres now for the game. Frawley at the line and by puts a kick in behind them. Man under pressure, takes no chances. He shovels it out and the Bulldogs will get six more tackles. Well, they get a chance to apply some more pressure. Then by on the edge. The left foot got the weight right. I'd like to see Umboy hang around the middle of the field. And they go back through the middle of the Dragons and he pushes up either off his Clemmer's left arm or Josh Jackson's right arm. Aaron Woods, we know how good he is 
at offloading. I just think they're a bit too predictable with the plays out the back. Well, McGregor, he'd be nervous. Drop out. Played off the legs here of Moses and by Woods looks up and he sees Tarek Sims coming out to get him. A reminder, NRL 360. And the big league wrap to follow all the action here today. It's Clemmer. A search of 200 metres or more here this afternoon. Frawley at the back. It goes across to Olive, who's all rounded up there by Aitken and also Hunt. Quick play the ball, though, from Morris. Fire back through Frawley. Here's Elliot. Jinking, stopping, starting, trying to find a way past James Graham, who stayed there in the tackle. Play five coming up as Holland gets to dummy half. Shows it. They came up quickly. Hunt was out of the line. There was a chance to put a kick in behind again, but Holland hangs on to it. Frawley, big decision here, but to kick in for himself. It bounces around, ends up in the hands of Paul Vaughan, and they've survived the bonus set on their own line. Well, that wasn't the sort of set you wanted to see the dogs throw at the Dragons with the game on the line. Two points down, they needed to try and come up with something. I don't think it's helped the fact that Holland is in dummy half. He got caught with the ball there. Frawley couldn't get to a teammate. It was a pretty ordinary finish to their set. Dragons hanging on. It was narrow lead with under seven minutes remaining now. Nightingale does get a cameo at the end. There's plenty riding on the result as well. He's out there. It's his first touch of the ball. Hunt puts it in the air. Choice here to be made by the Bulldogs. Nightingale taps it sideways. Kurt Mann has remained on the field at right wing. It's going to be a roving role assigned to Jason Nightingale. He's defending there between Ben Hunt and Ewan Aitken to begin this set of six. James Graham is the player who's been replaced. It's an unusual one, isn't it? Nightingale coming in for James Graham. He's certainly fresh. He might be asked to make a tackle at some stage on Clemeral Woods or this man, Vitala Mariner. They've got to generate a quick play of the ball and they've got to go through the middle. They can't try the out the back on the edges. Woods, Crawley, flat pass, an awful pass. It went forward. McDonald cleaned it up, gave it off to Widdick. And just as you say it, Brandy, they go for a shot on that right hand side and turn it over. Nightingale in the middle of the field. Chance here to potentially put this one to bed. McInnes for De Bell. They haven't considered a try in this second half, the Bulldogs, but they're under massive pressure here. Goes back to Hunt. Widdop reaches out to reel one in. Quick hands. Duffy McDonald. That pass was forward, and they've let them off the hook. Well, it keeps them in the game. The Bulldogs, their shift to the right. The out-the-back plays, and here it is. Out the back, Marshall King throws a forward ball that McDonald was waiting for, and fortunately, Hopawani was able to grab the pants of McDonald. This play worked in the first half where Dufty offloaded to McDonald. Not that time, though. The pressure from Montoya was too great, and he couldn't get the pass to find its mark. The kick in behind, there's the option. Moses and Byers getting caught in around the middle of the ruck so many times. There's plenty of space in behind Matoya because he knows he has to play up and in on Dufty. Dogs again hold it up in the scrum, trying to get the Dragons offside. Ready for it, the Dragons, and held their distance. Back from the scrum, Ben Hunt coming out here. Adam Elliott. And the huge pressure there. Here is the full-on siege from the Dragons' defensive line. Clemmer picks up barely a couple of metres. Woods goes out to the edge. Pops it behind Hopalwadi. Now they're in real trouble. He gives it to Montoya, though, and they're away. Montoya down the sideline. Runs to Dufty. Takes him on, and Dufty takes him into touch. An all-or-nothing decision by Marcelo Montoya. 
That was tackle three. He had to stay in the field of play. He had to step off the left foot and come back in. Hoppawati really wasn't an option to pass it to, but he couldn't go down the sideline. He wasn't going to beat Dufty for speed. He had to come back on the inside and at least allow the Dogs another couple of plays at this Dragons line. Big tackle by that man. But he didn't make it that difficult. Montoya it was only a metre of, of, of field before the sideline that he tried to work himself down. Hopawati almost creating something with that offload. The credit goes to Paul Vaughan. He was the one that put himself in, in between the support runner so that Montoya couldn't pass. Drop the ball backwards. Found a way down the sideline through Montoya. Josh Jackson here coming in. Just launching himself at the Dragons there. He's back on his feet. I don't know how. What a collision that was. A little dazed there. He's back in the line at the moment. He looks okay. Just remarkable. McGuinness hands it off to Jason Nightingale. Test out these tired Bulldogs forwards. Three minutes remaining. Hunt takes it to the line, goes out the back. Reeled in there by Dusty on the last. He runs into his own teammate, though. And a pour into the set of six. They've lost their way a couple of times now at this end in their last few possessions. Is that still the question mark on the game management of Ben Hunt with the Dragons? Well, he's got Gareth Widdop with him, too, and you'd think between both of them, that they could come up with the right play at this stage of the game. Three minutes, not the worst result in the world. They are making the dogs travel 75 and 80 metres. Head right again. Here's Mbai showing it. Slides through the tackle there. Play on as the call, not held. Gives it off to Montoya. And we're 40 metres out with tackles to play with here. Midway through this set, Hoppawati gives it to Marshall King. Sideline to sideline, Vitala Mariner from a standing, standing start, runs towards Hunt, spins, hands it off at John Olive, who's had precious few chances with the ball in his hands here today. Just outside the 30. Play five coming up. Inside two minutes remaining, trailing by two. Elliott, he goes to the line. Got them going backwards. Jackson puts a kick in for himself. It's still there. They'll get six more plays from the goal line dropout and they will get pretty much a full set of six to try and snatch it at the death. Well, he's come up with two kicks. One produced a try for Will Hopawati. The other one gives the Dogs the chance to snatch this game. Gets it onto the try line and forces the Dragons to knock the ball dead. He's been enormous, Josh Jackson. Gareth Widdop with the dropout. We go inside the final 60 seconds. What a time to produce almost a 60-metre dropout. Clemmerett is bringing it back to Graham. The radar was locked on each other. Graham was out to meet him. He was like a missile coming down the field. Woods will play it. Two tackles gone. Goes to Clemmer. To the right hand side again and by wrapped up here by Widdop. They've used up three. Hoppawati. 25 seconds on the clock now. Elliott showing it. Trying to do what he did in the first half to grab their only try of that first 40. Frawley puts a kick in. Back through the middle. It's there bouncing around. Cleaned up by the Dragons. Knock on is the call. The Bulldogs can stop the clock here by forming a scrum. And they'll have one play. One last chance. The kick from Frawley back, in the, back on the inside there for Marshall King. Looked like it was going to be cleaned up by the Dragons. So Tarek Sims knocks it back. Will knock on. Just off the hand there of Jack DeBellin before he cleaned it up with a second attempt. And they raced to the scrum to stop it. One play, what do you go with? I'd come to the blind with Brett Morris. 
Get it. Chuck, Chuck, he's a bit too deep though. He's 20 metres away from where the scrum is being packed. That's intriguing in itself. Clemmer out there at first receiver. Jackson to him by. That's why they're waiting for the reverse kick. Morris was the target. He didn't get there. It was intended for him. Kurtman makes the catch and the Dragons hang on to win. What a finish here to round out the round of action live on Fox League. A beauty on the Queen's birthday weekend. And the hoodoo, if there is a hoodoo, is dead. The Dragons beat the Bulldogs. 18 points to 16. And they do it without scoring a try in the second half.